Hey everyone, welcome to the Boosie Teaches podcast. As we say here at Boosie Teaches, in a galaxy of learners, Boosie Teaches lights the way. As our host Tanya Busico says to her students, come on in, relax, we'll be here a while. Let's get started. Welcome to the Boosie Teaches podcast. I'm your host, Tanya Busico. I'm Professor B to my students, Tanya to others, and Boosie to some. Currently, I'm an assistant professor transitioning out of higher ed. Yeah, we'll get to that. All right, so let's talk about the podcast. So the Boosie Teaches podcast gives intimate portraits of dynamic conversations with people who love reflecting on their personal journeys. Let me give you a vibe check for this podcast. So first we have the Oprah Soul Sunday vibe where we talk about passion, purpose, faith, spirituality. Then we also talk about what I'm calling wisdom conversation for the ages. In that part of the conversation, we talk about lessons learned and advice that might be given to our audience. And then we close each episode with some fun banter, kind of like the beauty shop, barbershop talk, where we talk about our top five, top five hip hop artists, top five movies. And so who is this podcast for? This podcast is for students, lifelong learners, or like me at the time of taping, people who found themselves or who find themselves at the fork in the road wondering what's next. This podcast is also for people that are sure of themselves and just need a little reminder. Hey, you're on the right track. And everyone in between. Now let's talk about this first season, shall we? This first season is all about mentors. I had the opportunity to, over the course of 20 episodes, have conversations with 21 mentors and influential people in my life. We had one episode where we had two guests. And my mentors range in professions, talents, and gifts. We have some educators, administrators, clergy, therapists. We even have a chef. It was incredibly important for me, particularly doing a project like this, to start with those who had impacted my life to be able to have these critical conversations, but also to thank them for their impact in my life. You know, give them their proverbial flowers when they can still smell them. Now I'm gonna keep it real with y'all, or as we say in professional speak, might I be candid? (laughs) This podcast was two years in the making. So the episodes were filmed from March, 2021 through December, 2021. But then... So basically I wanted to be able to be self-sufficient. And so I took the last two years to take audio and video production courses to learn how to mix master my own episodes. So one thing you'll see is that as the seasons progress, theoretically (laughs) uh, my skills should increase, but it was important for me to learn that skill for myself. But I do wanna give a shout out to all the audio engineers and producers of the world. (laughs) Y'all got this. Because let me tell you, it was a feat to learn how to do this kind of work. The other reason why this took two years to come out was, and one thing that you'll learn about me is I'm extremely strategic with my creative projects. And so my goal was during the time of filming, I was in this place where I was ready to transition my career. At the point of 2021, it had been four or five years that I had been an assistant professor and I just wasn't feeling valued as a black woman. And so for me, it was time to transition out of that role. And so I applied for these jobs and my goal was, hopefully I would have gotten a job within that nine month span of recording so that by episode 20, I could come out with the bonus episode and say, hey, thanks so much for listening. These conversations changed my life so much that I am moving to California with this great new job because my goal is to go to California and do my ultimate, um, pursue my ultimate dreams, which is to write and produce my own television shows and films. All right, so there I was by December, 2021, and no job materialized for me. So I said, okay, well, let me be a tech girly. So then I applied to be a tech girly. Well, did the tech job for a little bit. And so originally, I was going to then release the episodes starting summer 2022 because again, my goal was to basically tell you all as the audience, these conversations were so amazing, which they are. They changed my life so much, which they did. 
And this is what's next. Well, wouldn't you know, with the tech job, it did not pan out. I did an internship and I worked part-time, but there was never any full-time offer. So here we are sitting on these episodes. I'm ready to edit them, send them out to the world. But again, I'm being very strategic. Finally, 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 December 2022, I had the fortunate opportunity of being able to finally, after applying for hundreds of jobs, getting a job in California that was remote for a nonprofit. So now I can say with episode zero, I don't have to wait till episode 20 to say that, that these conversations were so powerful just because my timing, the timing of my shift wasn't quite the timing that I wanted to have with my strategy, didn't mean that these conversations did not give me the strength and the confidence to be able to move forward. And so I can tell you right now that at the end of the summer, not only am I transitioning out of higher education, I'm moving to California to pursue my dreams. Of course, I'm still gonna have a nine to five until I pursue my dreams. But I share that context to say that in the same way that I started this recording process unsure of myself. I wasn't sure that people would still be proud of me. I wasn't sure if I was even going to be proud of myself. But these conversations really helped put the battery in my back. It is something so powerful to be able to talk to 21 people, to hear their stories, be inspired by their lives, the way that they put the pieces of their lives together, the way that they've had to invent themselves and reinvent themselves. And one thing that's special about my mentors, they are dreamers. So it is my hope that after these 20 episodes, you too will feel seen. You too will feel heard. You too will be inspired to pursue your dreams ever the more. I really do hope that these 20 episodes will do for you what they've done for me, which was shift my mindset and remind me that number one, I am more than just my job. I am more than my career. I am enough. But we get so caught up in the rat race, so caught up in proving ourselves every day, so caught up in not realizing that, you know, we're falling into the imposter syndrome. But after these 20 conversations, these are like, these are like pep talks on steroids, y'all. Like They're just amazing. You hear about their professions. They have amazing careers or they retired from amazing careers. But that didn't make them immune to adversity. And so I'm just so excited that you all will finally, finally be able to hear what has been propelling me forward for the last two years. Because for the last two years, I've been listening to these episodes over and over again. Moments where I wasn't sure, moments where it was like, oh, what did so-and-so say? And I had it here. And so I hope that for you, again, these episodes will do for you what they did for me. That being said, let me briefly talk about the structure. Is a teacher in me. The structure of each episode. So each episode opens with the mentor's bio, their impact on my life and how we met. Then we go into our conversation where we check in, see how they're doing. And that is a time capsule moment because of course, like I was saying, the filming was in 2021. So we get to hear how their lives were in 2021. Then we go right into the conversation, learning about who they were as primary, secondary students, college, technical or career, students, I mean, career school student, vocational students, excuse me, their career choices, their families, and just (laughs) at the end of each conversation, like I said, we have some fun banter. Now let's hear the list of episodes. Episode one, Dr. John W. Kinney, or Dean Kinney, as many of us call him, Professor Emeritus of Theology, and the former Dean of, and promise you, (laughs) I promise y'all, this is how we say it at the seminary, the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University. We taped our episode April 2021. But there was something deep in my spirit. 
Can I tell you what? And the, and the spirit said this, because I was doing very well there. You know, students loved to come to my classes. We're talking, and I was just beginning to find myself. And I, I'm, some of the things that my interchange and how I'm, I firmly believe that 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 teaching is dialogical. That the students teach you, and every year I'm a better teacher because of the students that I taught. <laughs> the um, and I begin to see and, and dream and feel, um, but I also recognize something in my core. And here's here. I mean, here's a message that came to me. Episode two, Dr. Catherine Clay Bassard, former professor and chair of the English department at Virginia Commonwealth University, and now current provost and vice president for academic affairs of Rhodes College. We taped our episode April 2021. Teaching for me is mostly just about having conversations, right. you know, and especially as a literature professor, some great books, some great writers and let's talk about them and let's see um, how we read them, but also how the books read us, you know, mm -hmm. and how, how, how these writers give us things that help us examine ourselves differently. Mm -hmm. um, I like to talk anyway. I, I <laughs> feel completely blessed that I found a profession where I get paid for doing what I would do anyway, you know, talking about like the news, talking about Toni Morrison, or talking right. about Alice Walker. I think that's just tremendous. Um, but I've never seen teaching as a hierarchical thing. I've never seen it as being about me, you know, imparting information. Although, you know, one of the great things about a PhD, you learn a lot. You have all this stuff you want to tell the world, but also learning from uh, my students and having students teach each other as well. So there's, there's several dynamics going on to me in a successful classroom. Episode three, Dr. Tanya Pettifer Waits, professor of theater at Virginia Commonwealth University. We taped our episode, June, 2021. Being an excellent educator is an artistic practice um, because you have, to, you have to be responsive, you have to evolve, Right. You have to, you know, um, be a facilitator, mm, that's <laughs> right? True. Uh, uh, lecturing is something I only do sparingly. Mm -hmm. And it's usually after I've told somebody something uh, multiple times and they then they get a lecture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but usually what I want to do is an engage, I want to engage in, in a facilitated process whereby knowledge, uh, they recognize they don't know something and they want to know. And right. so they are attempting to pursue it. Right. Episode four, Dr. Paula Johnson, principal of my alma mater, Lansdowne High School in Virginia Beach. We taped our episode June, 2021. It's that person who sees something in you um, that you don't see in yourself right. or you do see it, but you're not there yet as far as the confidence with it mm -hmm. but then this is support you and to really uh help you with your ideas and also with the, um the thoughts of you know what to do uh if i fail that's why you got to push that growth mindset because that's so huge um right. with that and then you learn from our mistakes and we grow stronger the brain is that muscle so we got to keep using it and learning from it so for me episode five dr nathaniel west Assistant Professor of Christian Education at Virginia Union School of Theology and Licensed Professional Counselor. We taped our episode April 2021. Yeah, so um, imagination I think is so key because the imagination for me speaks around, speaks about inspiration and hope mm -hmm. um, and newness, right? You know, so um, I think, you know, um, connecting to what we just talked about, you know, just because things are going well, and this is where I think a lot of people get stuck because they stop imagining. Right. You know, they stop imagining. And so, you know, so one of the things I love to do is teach. Um, Episode six, Andrew Blackmore, Program Director of the Licensed Professional Counselors Association of Georgia. We taped our episode May, 2021. I was, when I got into guidance counseling, for sure, I was like, this is it. Like, yeah this is it. It's so great. I feel so good doing this, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to help somebody solve a problem or feel better about themselves, just to change their mindset from negative to positive. If you think about that on a globe, on a, you know, macro scale, the ripple effects of that are infinite. 
because attitudes are contagious, negativity and positivity are both contagious. You know, you feed off of what you're, what's around you. So I, in my brain, I'm thinking like, right. all right, if I can help Tanya be happier for, or be better at whatever right. in her mind, then she'll right. be better. She'll be a better friend. She'll right. be a better, whatever she is. And then those ripples right. go out. And then right. episode seven, Lisa Hope, current civil service project manager. We taped our episode July, 2021. Evolving decades, success has changed. My my opinion of success had, has re evolved mm -hmm. so many times, but at one point, 20 plus years ago, success was having that great job, making a lot of money. Right. Okay. Um, but then you, you get to that level and then it's like, now what? How, how much do you want to keep climbing the corporate ladder, uh, ladder and then mm -hmm. what are you giving up to get that? Episode eight, Professor Omiyemi, Artisha Green, Professor of Theater at the College of William & Mary. We taped our episode July, 2021. The purpose, uh, you know, has been to create the mirror mm. that allows people to see themselves. Mm -hmm. And for me, that mirror is the art. Yeah. Um, and it's not, well, it's not just the art, but it's also the teaching and specifically teaching these courses in, you know, Africana studies slash theater. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's giving people an opportunity to see themselves, know themselves, remember, put back the pieces. Right. Episode nine, Pastor Abigail Russard, Associate Dean of Continuing Education and Reverend Megan DeWalt, Director of the Institute for Youth Ministry, both at Princeton Theological Seminary. We taped our episode, December, 2021. The quote is, enlightened trial and error succeeds over the lone genius. Mm. Ooh. Let me say that I again. I love that. <laughs> it's really good. Enlightened trial and error succeeds over the lone genius. And I, I wrote that on a sticky note when I heard it and I put it on my um, computer. My computer is more like, of like a bulletin board for all my sticky notes <laughs> than it is anything. And I put it on my computer so that I would see it um, all the time and remember like, I don't have to just be struck by, you know, in a moment of inspiration or genius, but rather mm -hmm. learning, making mistakes, failing, getting back up, trying again, you know, tweaking, mm -hmm. all of that is is on the way to genius and purpose. So episode 10, Dr. Noreen Barnes, professor emeritus of theater and the former director of the graduate theater program at Virginia Commonwealth University. We taped our episode, March, 2021. And to also get them to think how they in turn would convey this to others, how they would teach right. what, I'm, what I just taught them. Right. Of course, the focus of the program being on pedagogy, right? That always was in my mind about okay, here's all this stuff, right? This is this story of this, you know, production, mm -hmm. and that took place, you know, in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. So this is what happened during it. This is why I think it's important. How would you then tell? you know, an undergraduate class about this event and, you know, why it's important. So I was getting my grad students to think about how they would then in turn teach. Episode 11, Dr. Vernon Hurt, Vice President of Student Affairs at Towson University. We taped our episode June, 2021. I'm, I am um, really, to, to an extent, I am really bought into this idea of growing, growing where you're planted. Um, I think that there is um, opportunity for growth in, in any context. Now, you have to have the level of awareness to know when that context is no longer um, a space that is fertilizing you and that is feeding you in a way to grow. Um, but I think that there is a, that anybody can grow pretty much in any space for a particular season. And Episode 12, Dr. Kim Payne, Organizational Development Manager in the Office of Organizational Development and Digital Learning with 
Old Dominion University Global. We taped our episode July 2021. Um, it's different and it's similar because it, it depends on the individual. Okay. The like, like, are they a go-getter like yourself? Are they shy? Are they insecure? Like, what are their dreams and aspirations? Do they not know what they want to do? So right. you kind of talk. Um, so it just depends. Some people I can't be loud with and joke with. Some are very, some it's cultural sometimes, you know. That's true. That's important. Yeah. Episode 13, Reverend Dr. Corey D.B. Walker, Interim Dean of the Wake Forest University School of Divinity, Wake Forest Professor of Humanities, and the Director of the Program in African American Studies. Fun fact, he's also on my PhD committee. We taped our episode May 2021. What would you say is your genius or your purpose? I think my purpose really is to be a great teacher. Um, I love teaching. Uh, that is really the thing that animates me every day. I, I love to engage the learning process. I love to learn with students. Um, I love looking at uh, new ideas and then rethinking old ideas. Uh, I know I teach um, intro to African-American studies. I've taught that now for almost two decades. And that's mm -hmm. still the, the class where I learn the most because I get to read one book over and over and over again, The Souls of Black right. Folk. And yeah. that is just, you know, that's just critical uh, for me. And that's just a... That's a wonderful aspect, and it's a wonderful affirmation. Episode 14, Dr. Aaron Burke Brown, Director of Family and Community Engagement for Richmond Public Schools. We taped our episode June 2021. Um, you know, I think when I think about my role now, and I'm in, I run a department that has uh, about 40 people in it, and, you know, my job is to make their jobs feel easy. Mm -hmm. And I do that through developing structures and planning and being organized. And also a big part of my job, I think, is hyping them up, you know, right. <laughs> like right. making them feel themselves like, you know, right. you can be so good at this. Like, yes, that was a great idea and giving yes. them feedback. And so to me, definitely a developer of people, but also a developer of programs. Um, and I like that. My office is is new. It's only three years old. And I feel like I've always been a part of offices when they're growing or mm -hmm. trying to transition. Right. And um, I've been a little bit of a fixer. Like, okay. come in, it's, it's not going well. Like, that's what AmeriCorps wasn't doing well. It's like, mm -hmm. we need somebody who can turn it around. Right. Um, you know, service learning was new and growing mm -hmm. in a different way. And even now, Aspire was completely new, my office now. And so I feel like that's been a... Episode 15, Chef Amory James, Director of Feed More's Meals on Wheels and Community Kitchen. We taped our episode October 2021. Right. And everything doesn't have to, everything right. takes time to obtain. Right. You can't just put your car, your, your your VCU RAM card into the dispenser and it's going to spit you out a degree. Right. You got to go to school. Right. <laughs> it's going to take time. Right. So right. so even when you sit here and think about that, um, to be here, you know, to, to know that even with the employees and staff and volunteers and even the people we serve who I may never meet 99% right. of the people who we touch. Right. But to know that there's a connection there. Episode 16, Reverend Lisa Janes, Associate Pastor and Circulation Supervisor of Morton Library Circulation Desk at Union Presbyterian Seminary. We taped our episode July 2021. You know, when I was drawing on everything, nobody said, stop drawing. Yeah. They gave me paper and said, keep drawing. So even yeah. when I went to DCU, I had people, you know, in my family that continued to support me. Yes. Uh, uh, so the genius is allowing yourself to become all that you are to become. Yes. And continue to become in spite of the naysayers, in spite of those people who don't understand. But right. also that genius is connected to everything that uh, nurtured you. Like you talked 
episode 17, Pastor Lucretia Mason Underdo, counselor and pastor of United Community Church. We taped our episode July 2021. At that time, it meant achieving any goal that was set before me. That was success for me. Mm-hmm. Success for me was never about how much money I had. Okay. That wasn't that did that was not the definition of success for me, and that's because of my upbringing. Episode eighteen, Reverend Paula Watson, hospital staff chaplain at a children's hospital. We taped our episode July twenty twenty one, and I share with them out of the things that I've experienced, and I realize now that that's just been my calling, and all along I just didn't know that that was a part of it, so. My purpose is to heal. My calling is also to help heal. And so um, my purpose and my calling are intertwined with one another. Um, I just didn't know that back then. Um, Episode 19, Tom Bannard, Assistant Director of Substance Use and Recovery Support at Virginia Commonwealth University. We taped our episode December 2021. Uh, my my purpose is is kind of based in you know, how do we get um, our um, our families, our communities, our state, our society uh, to treat uh, people who use substances or people that are in recovery from substance use disorder with dignity and respect, um, you know, and um, and so that's kind of, that's been the, the foundation of, um, uh, yeah, everything, all the work that I've done over the last, um, you know, 14, 15 years. Uh, so 20, Kate Boss, current development consultant and former director of children's television for the Jim Henson Company. We taped our episode December 2021. Fun fact, this episode was actually the last episode that I taped in this season. My advice would just be follow your dreams and, and, you know, don't be worried that a dream um, will be delayed if you're thinking about something that doesn't feel exactly on the path to the direct thing that you're trying to go for. You'll be surprised on how different paths and different choices that you make eventually lead you to the place you want to go. And it might not always be where exactly you expect it. And that's okay too. And so I hope that for you, again, these episodes will do for you what they did for me.